Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with a bit of a product overview come review for you. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So what are we looking at both school? Well, if you can't guess, it's the Army Painter Rage. Come on, come get a bit closer and let me explain it. So the Army Painter product range, and it is a product range. Now you may be sitting there and going, hey, what, Bosicle? That's a bit much. Well, this isn't even all of it, to be truthful. It's enough for me to show you, you know, the product range and that sort of stuff. But I have got other bits. Now, this sort of uh, review has been a long time com coming. It's been over a year since I started using Army Painter. And there's a bit of a tale behind it. Originally, I was uh, in a, a sort of YouTube collaboration group or hobby wargaming collaboration group to big, do this big Roman project last summer. But unfortunately, the project fell through. But off the back of it, uh, Warlord had arranged with Army Paint to send us some paints out. And so we got some paints. Then off the back of that, I got some more stuff. And then, what you call it, as I, well, the Roman project fell through, but as I've been using them and that sort of stuff, not long ago, I went over to the Beasts of War Army Painter slash Rune Wars Hobby Boot Camp. And I had an absolute blast. But I got to meet the guys who run Army Painter and set it up. Okay. And I got to meet specifically Jonas, who, who actually set it up. And Jonas is an ex-heavy metal painter, so he knows his paints. And another reason this sort of thing has been sort of sort of so long in the coming is that unlike normal products, you can normally get a quick handle on a product relatively quickly. With something like a paint range, you've got to do quite a bit of work to get, you know, to get an honest opinion of it. Okay, and Mel's not the quickest painter in the world. So let's very quickly take you through the army painter range before we start nailing things down. Right, first off, yeah, you, we've got their brushes and their sort of hobby tools. Yeah, we've got their scenic supplies with basing scatter, basing materials, tufts. Okay, moving on. We've got their paints, which include all their acrylic paints, their metallic paints, their washes, their shades, and some of their technical paints. Over here we've got their spray primers, okay, and over here we've got their polyutherane dips. And there's quite a bit, yeah. Now, uh, as always, yeah, my product reviews are going to be utterly honest, as they always are. Yeah, and I've got to say, short story is, I quite like the range, with some caveats, guys. Okay, so let's start off. Let's start off with the brushes. So if I bring these up for you. Yeah, they produce a wide range of brushes, an absolute humongous amount. Yeah, they've got one for pretty much every sort of situation, to be perfectly honest. Okay, I still haven't had the courage to try the, the Kalinsky master, Masterclass yet. Yeah, but I have hammered the hell out of most of their other brushes, and they are really good. Okay, uh, they're good for terrain, they're good for models. I have been using it, well, I do mainly terrain, as you know, yeah. I'm not really a model painter, but with the model painting, the, the brushes keep their tips really well. I think they're horsehair, to be truthful, and, the, you know, you don't lose the point like you do with other, what you call it, with other paints. Also, they seem to be a lot better at not, what you call it, uh, not drawing the paint into the ferrule, okay? Yeah, normally you would get a clump of paint at the bottom with, with what you call model painting brushes. And slowly over time that would build up and, and splay the ends apart. And these, these don't, these are really good. And like I say, they've got all sorts. They've got hog hair brushes, synthetic ones. They've got flat edge ones for dry brushing. Yeah, and like I say, the brushes, Really good, so they get a thumbs up from me, yeah. Uh, really good for, for model work, and you know, they certain of the brushes good for what you call it for terrain work, but as you know, terrain work can be a bit abusive on brushes. So, the cheap brushes you know you get from the craft store still have a place in terrain work, yeah. But for your do detailed stuff, I, I did a lot of work, yeah, on buildings with these flat edge br brushes because they're great for getting into corners and. You know, basically painting large areas, yeah, but with a lot of control. Really good, really good indeed. In fact, yeah, this one here, yeah, I painted 
my entire Rune Wars army <laughs> with that brush and not one tinier. <laughs> yeah, here's a photo of them. Not bad, eh? Right, so that's the brushes, yeah, and they are good kit. Moving on, yeah, we've got their basing materials. Now, I know my terrain, actually, you're sniggering under your breath because you're looking at that and going, eh, it's probably about two, three, four quid. Yeah, giggle, giggle, giggle. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, as Terraniacs, we we buy a much bigger bulk because our pro our basing projects are bigger, and we make our own. So you know we can source our own. Yeah, same with the tufts. You know, any decent Terraniac is is already looking at a flock box and sort of you know making his own tufts because of the sheer volume we use. That being said, yeah. Don't discount them, Terraniacs. I mean, for model model guys, perfect. You know, there's enough in here to do an army. You know, that's all you need. Yeah, and you don't, you know, and you're not buying massive bulk amounts that you've got sitting on a shelf you'll never use. Okay, so they are good for, for your model guys, but for terrain guys, you know, I know you're sniggering. But here's one thing I'll say. Keep an eye on the Scenics, okay, because they're little scatter boxes and they do quite a lot of these. They're really good for spot highlighting with your ground foliage and with your for highlighting uh, foliage work, as in bushes and and tree foliage and stuff like that. Yes, we can buy lots of colours in bulk, as we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. But using their colours as sort of like tints and highlights to our normal ones. It can be a really cheap and effective way of, of really building up a, a range of other scenics. And this doesn't apply just to Army Painter. This is all with the model companies, because all the model companies fall into this sort of group with this sort of basic material, okay? You can use these, ba these materials, okay, to highlight all sorts of different things so don't discount them keep your eye on them especially the darker ones and the lighter ones yeah they can work really well yeah with the tufts they're good for quick projects you know i've been using one pack of these and it's pretty much done the tufts on probably about 12 scatter pieces yeah so they're viable if you haven't got a flock box yeah but if you are a serious terrainiac then you need to be looking at a flock box you know, and start making your own tufts and that sort of stuff. Right, moving on, spray primers. Now, Army Painter do this thing where, what they do is they color match uh, a number of their paints to spray primers. So you can spray with a primer and then touch up and just continue painting with the color match paint. And it's genius. It's absolutely genius. It saves so much time i mean on these room wall guys these was these were spray painted red yeah and then all i had to do was go in and add the block detail okay worked really smart as a painting system now obviously you can get color primers from other companies and stuff like that but i'm not aware of any that are color matched i don't know if the new gw ones are to be perfectly honest i haven't played with those but these are 100 percent color matched for terraniacs that's brilliant okay because when you one of the one of the best upsides of these yeah and specifically this one okay fur brown this is brilliant for terra cross terracotta bricks with a dark brown wash over it this is what i use for my buildings on the turf war z project and the beauty of these is that because it's color matched i can spray paint prime what you call it the mdf buildings which is always better using a color primer to prime mdf buildings they soak up acrylic paints and moisture loads and sometimes can go bitty so colour primers are the way to go with MDF builds. But because it's colour matched, what you can do is you go in with this and give it a good coat. Yeah, and we all know that when we prime buildings, there's always overhangs and little scribbly bits that you can't quite get. In that case, you can go in with the colour match fur brown out of the paint range, yeah, and touch up either with an airbrush or with a, a brush, yeah, and it's 100% match, it's perfect. Yeah, so massive plus side for these for MDF buildings. Now, not just that, okay? The grey is good for uh, your ruin buildings. Yeah, you can do zenith highlighting with that, and I'll cover a video on that in the future. But these two, every Terraniac 
should own these two cans okay the reason being is this is pretty much my go-to for any sort of horsehair rubberized horsehair coconut fiber any sort of sub foliage that i want a nice brown brackeny look okay just spray it with this really good coverage always clings to it love this stuff i've gone through about four cans so far but i do a lot of terrain yeah another one they're angel green. Yeah, this beautiful dark angel green. <laughs> yeah. This is really good for foliage. Yeah, as a substructure. Remember when I was talking about the highlighting? Hit some what you call it, hit some coconut fiber with this, yeah. Go in with one of their lighter what you call it, uh basing tones while it's still wet and just sprinkle it over. And you literally have your canopies. So what you can do is you can literally get a bit of coconut fiber from say you know the uh, in you know the plant liners the the sort of brown sheets that you get inside of hanging plants yeah, and they're about a quid each you can get those rip them up scrunch them up yeah spray them with that while it's still wet come in with a light basing foliage yeah sprinkle it right on top there's your brushes there's your bushes there's your treetops and it is as easy as that that then that job done okay you can go in afterwards and give it a quick shine quick blast of their anti-shine which is a matte varnish it's not because it's glossy but it's a quick spray that'll seal it if you don't want to use watered down pva but of course you can apply watered down pva to these so genuinely yeah from the bottom of my heart guys get yourself some of these cans if you're doing foliage work you'll love them okay if you're doing brick work they're fur brown highly recommend it highly recommend it yeah so terrainiacs you want these on your shelves guys now i do know that you train will come up and say i use this i use this i use this i haven't tried any, all the other paint range possible paint ranges that are out there but these are good and do the job which is why i'm recommending them so next one is well we've got their paints and we've got their quick shades okay now quick let's have a let's have a quick chat about their quick shades okay now their quick shades are a polyutherane varnish, yeah, which is really, really, really tough, yeah. Uh, they do their quick shades in three tones, okay. You've got a soft tone, you've got a strong tone, and a dark tone. And we've used them all, and they're good results. I particularly like the dark tone, yeah, because I like good, strong highlights on my models. I'm not one of these people when I paint a model that I go for subtle effects. I'm more... Give me hard contrast lines that make the model look good from sort of tabletop view. Basically, because I'm not really a good miniature painter, so I don't really paint for up close, I paint for far away. I mean, I can knock out a reasonable mini miniature, <laughs> he says. <laughs> so, polyutherane varnish, it is a tough varnish. It goes on, and when it goes on, it goes on thick, and it goes on really glossy. Yeah, so you have to put a matte varnish on afterwards, but it works really well. Now, just to show you, okay, this is one of my Skelly Bobs from Dungeon Saga. This was just base colours, yeah, literally just base colours and that dark wash. Okay, uh, I need to do a little bit more matte, I missed a bit with me matte in there. Okay, but what I wanted to show you was cloak, nail. Yeah, let's step it up. Come on, it ain't a Melvid unless we really test these things. What well, forgot? Give me one second. Right, I really shouldn't be doing this because these are my gaming models. Yeah, but, okay. No scratches. Right, plastic brush. We'll, we'll go across the grain. See it? I can't see anything. A little, a little abrasion, yeah? But it's not taking the paint off. <sighs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, you gotta see what it's like. <sighs> I 
that was with a metal, metal wire brush. Yeah, you can see some little scratches on it, but it's not taken the paint off. Yeah, it's just scratched over the surface of the varnish. Now, I'm not too worried about that because I know from my knowledge of varnish that if I just put a quick matte coat over that, that will go back to normal. But what it does mean is this. You ready? It means I have absolutely no problem. These are my gaming miniatures. Oh, I've dropped one. Now remember, I game with my kids, yeah, and I like my models, but I've got no worries doing that with this stuff on them. It is tough as hell, yeah. This is a little, what you call it, this is a little dungeon saga door that Willow did, okay. She's gone over a little on the, on the corners, but it's a really good. Now all this was, was base colours, okay, and then that dark wash. It's come out beautiful, but nothing, yeah, nothing, nothing at all. You really can give these things hammer. So with regards to their quick shades, I really do like them, especially for gaming models. Okay, my kids play a lot with my models. You know what I mean? They they they're collecting. I hope I haven't broken any of these by throwing them. <laughs> the varnish doesn't protect models, you know, from breaking. But anyway, the the watch the varnish really, really good. It looks horrible going on. It looks absolutely disgusting, to be perfectly honest. It's thick stuff. You've really got to open the tin, give it a really good stir. Okay. Uh, with regards to applying it now. They say you should dip it and then shake it off. And I had a bit of a masterclass up from, from what you call it, from Jonas, who owns Army Painter when I was over at Beast War, and he showed me how to do it. And I did it on these. And this is dead, so these are Room War models, okay? But it was into the dark, yeah? Give them a good shake, and then with a brush, just pull off and drag off the excess, yeah? and it dries beautifully hard. To be perfectly honest, I am not a fan of the dip method. I can understand it if you've got to get through a lot of troops. So if you're a horde player, if you've got a horde of orcs, or you know, you're doing a mass of Romans, or anything which is tons, yet yeah, the dip method, you get them in a pair of grips, you dip them in, one, two, shake, 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 you then pour them down, you get a brush, you take off the excess, yeah, and then they're done. I prefer brushing it on. So literally get in a brush, yeah, dip it in, yeah, into a well stirred pot and brush it on. It's probably gonna take you an extra five, 10 seconds per model, but I find that you get much better control by brushing it on. Now my only complain about quick shade, complaint about quick shade, other than trying to get it off my hands, wear gloves guys, seriously wear gloves, <laughs> yeah, or get spirits, why spirits, yeah, uh, but my only sort of complaint about Army Painter quick shade is that they don't have a clear tone, you know, I know that may seem, uh, yeah, but it's a quick shade boast, yeah, I know, but they also do washes which are really nice, really nice, okay, but there's no clear varnish to put over the wash, yeah? So you can protect them like you can protect these other models, yeah? For example, I shouldn't have really been throwing this one around because he wasn't done with the polyurethane wash. And now I'm worried that I may have chipped him. He's had a varnish, but I, I know he's not as tough as these, yeah? But the washes, if I bring them up, yeah? They go on beautifully smooth really beautifully smooth okay but like I say I'd like to be able to put a clear varnish over that's as tough as the quick shade so Jonas yeah <laughs> if you're watching yeah can we have a clear one of these please yeah just for protecting our minis without actually having to shade them and change the color when we use the washes and stuff like that yeah but big fan of these massive fan the 
there's no real application in terrain guys to be perfectly honest but for your models really good especially if they're going to take some ammo if you've got kids or you're going to be playing with kids it's the way to go guys especially when you consider that these the skeletons that i'm showing are you know prime with a color primer couple of base coats and they are only base coats and then that hard dip and you get beautiful results really beautiful results so that's the dips covered okay let's talk about their acrylic paints oh i need to make some room <laughs> army paint <of> varnish <laughs> right i've got a lot of paints now i got sent some through at the start because of warlord Okay, and then I, I don't know the name of the gentleman. I'm going to put it on screen. I would have it, yeah, but Messenger is down and I can't access the Messenger. But someone on the Boot Wars boot, boot Camp, yeah, name on the screen now, won a, what you call it, an Army Painter Mega Paint Set. This huge thing, yeah. And he donated it to me, yeah, as a sort of a patron gift. Yeah, so I ended up with an absolutely bucket load. If you're wondering why there's two boxes, yeah, these are duplicates of these. These are my studio paints, these are my at home paints, yeah? Even with the brushes, I've actually separated the brushes into two lots, yeah, because these are the ones me and the kids and Kez paint with, and the, the whole collection. It's what stays in my studio, these are mine. The kids, I can't have the kids wasting these. I might need them. Okay, so when we talk about their paints, yeah, obviously we've got their acrylic paints, yeah? On top of that, you've got their metallic paints. On top of that, you've got their shades, yeah, and inks, and then if I go hunting, I don't know where they are. On top of that, they've just started bringing technical paints out. Yeah, now I haven't played with the technical paints yet, so I can't comment on them, to be perfectly honest. There's a rust one somewhere. Lava orange. Oh, come on. Surely I could find a rust, a dry rust. They brought out these effect paints. Okay, now to be perfectly honest, the effect paints I haven't played with. They've got another one. There's a blood one. I think that's an effect paint. Yeah, that's supposed to be really good. Yeah, to be perfectly guys, I can't comment because I haven't used their effect paints. But I have used their acrylics. I've used their washes and I've used their metallics. Now, very quick off, off the bat. With regards to their acrylics, yeah, they are strong, yeah. They're all, they remind me a lot of the old Citadel foundation paints. Now, with that in mind, I'm not going to say they're a one coat base coat, yeah. They're about a 95% base coat, i.e., yeah, when you lay a, a coat of this down over a primed model, what you get is the only time where it doesn't get full coverage is on like the peaks and the ridges of things where you get the paint recessing a little and then it sort of slides off it. You painters will know what I mean. What I generally find is by the time I've painted all the large area, yeah, the little it's dried enough that I can go over almost immediately and add just a, a quick little touch up. So they are really good paints. Now, the metallics, okay, uh, these remind me of the old uh, Citadel Metallics as well. They are excellent coverage. I've struggled finding good metallic paints for good coverage. Yeah, because you know what it's like. So a lot of them can be quite watery and you need to put two or three coats down yeah, before you actually get any results. These are pretty much one coat yeah, with a nice, smooth, even sort of base coating. I mean, that sword there, that's just one coat of i think it's the gun metal yeah but it went down smooth lovely the brasses they're strong a lot of paints with the brasses and the golds they can be really watery yeah but these these really good uh with regards to the inks and the strong tones and the soft tones the washes yeah come in the same sort of strong tones plus they've got flesh washes and stuff like that much like the dips this is why if you use these washes i'd like a clear one of the dips so i could protect them they go on beautifully smooth there's no pooling there's no glossing with them yet yeah, they're really good the inks 
they they are good yeah a little need need a little bit of watering down with them to be perfectly honest yeah but overall really good inks yeah now there's something I do need to make clear and it's not so much a problem with army painter it's more an issue with physics and the paints yeah so I need to pick a paint I've never used and I've never used jungle green okay so let me put those there because I need to show you oh you just go up there you and I need a little bit of white that'll do okay now because paints are made up of an acrylic binder and a pigment yeah because these are heavy pigments pigmented there's quite a density in pigment and over time you get separation and you get this with all paints the heavier the pigment the more likely they are to separate and in the case of what you call it, army painter yeah if i hold it up you can see the acrylic filler the acrylic binder there now what this means is when you first get these paints and you first come to use them you get the shocking thing of these paints are absolutely rubbish yeah because what happens is when you start squeezing you get the acrylic binder actually this isn't too bad there we go see that now obviously I might make Mike who's a, a professional painter he actually canned these off after trying a couple of colours because he said they were too watery and it was only when I was with Jonas well I figured that actually it's separation yeah they've been sitting for a long while they need a good shake but it was only Jonas yeah who was sort of like what he recommended when we were at uh, uh, Watch Up Beast of War was what you do is you come along and the first you squeeze out a good three inches of the acrylic binder the reason you do that is because that will leave the room now in this okay to actually shake it so if we put the lid back on there's now room to give it a good shake and you have to give it a good shake because like I say they do bind really well I think I get need to get one of those automated paint shakers you see going around Westy calm down <laughs> In joke yeah so reasonable amount of a shake yeah get it back out bring it back up and get to the paint and there you go really nice and thick now my, my personal recommendation is when you get them yeah get rid of a bit of a, the acrylic filler pull the end out drop a watch call it Drop a, a, a tiny little marble in there, yeah, or a tiny little ball bearing. You can get little glass jewellery beads, yeah, the glass, glass jewellery beads are great because the glass doesn't interact with the paint, unlike metal and stuff like that and wood and other bits. Uh, Mike chops up his models and throws bits of hands and stuff like that in there, yeah, but anything just to, as an agitator, yeah. That's really important with these paints because I've also noticed because they are a heavy, dense pigment, they do have a tendency to separate over time if you don't use them. Yeah, so dropper bottles are great. Yeah, but be aware that if you get an army paint paint, you need to squeeze out about three inches of the first acrylic binder. Broke my heart, that did. <laughs> As a trainee, that just broke my heart. It's like it's wasting it. Yeah, but to be truthful, the more acrylic binder you squeeze out, yeah, don't squeeze it all out for God's sake. Yeah, but the more you squeeze out, the stronger the paint gets. <laughs> yeah, but like I say, all it needs is a good shake. Yeah, a little room in there, and if possible, drop an agitator in, and it works absolutely fine. Yeah, so just be aware of that, guys. It's not a problem with the paint range. I want to make that clear. This is physics. All paints do the same. Yeah. So... Please don't be concerned that, oh, they're naff. They're not naff, guys. It's just physics. So, uh, that's it, guys. That's my opinion of the Army Painter range. Going through, I really like the brushes. Yeah, the Scenics have, have a place if, you, if you're a model, what you call it, guy, and you don't want to buy bulk like us Terraniacs do. Yeah, Terraniacs, they have a place. Don't dismiss them completely. 
spray cans, Terraniacs, fur brown, yeah, leather brown, and angel green. Get them, just buy them, you'll love them, okay? Polyurethane varnishes, if you're doing models and you're a gamer and you're not doing display work, okay? Really, really good, okay? The paints, I like them. They're good, strong, coloured paints. Once you figure out that acrylic binder thing, the washes are good, yeah, the metallics go on smooth. God, I'm sounding like such a fanboy. I think I am. To be perfectly honest, it's high. I'm struggling to find faults with the range. I mean, I, I never go into pricing, yeah, because pricing is one of those subjective things. Well, someone thinks it's expensive, someone else will think it's cheap. Yeah, I, I judge things on, what you call it, function, use. And these are good. They've been designed to work. And it makes sense. Jonas was a heavy metal painter. He's developed the paint range to paint armies. That's why it's called Army Painter. Now, one final, what you call it, sort of example of why I think the Army Painter system is good. Okay, and this is coming from, you know, a war gamer, not a professional painter, okay, but a war gamer. I want you to get these two undead trolls. I'm going to bring them up to the camera so you can see them nice and clearly. Yeah, now, give me two seconds. Right, no. Uh, right, <laughs> okay. If you're wondering what the delay was about, okay, this one, okay, if I bring it up, this one was done with their sort of undead necrotic flesh primer. I went in with their dragon blood red, I went in with a brown, and I went in with a gray. I then gave it a heavy dark wash, sorry, a dark varnish with their quick shade brushed on. I then went in and just very quickly touched up the stonework, yeah, and just touched up the bones, yeah, with a little bit just to make them pop. And I've been painting models for well over 20 years now. I mean, I'm not a professional model painter. I am nowhere in the league of the likes of like Danny Nuttall or, you know, Joe from Warmaster, yeah. But I'm okay. Now, this one was painted at the same time as this one, yeah? This one, painted in exactly the same colours, exactly the same te technique, was painted by Dominic, yeah? Dominic is a friend of Kez from university, okay? And Dom, this was the first time he'd ever picked up a model brush, ever used model paints. This is his first model. Yeah, and even now, yeah, I struggle to tell the difference between which one I painted and which one he painted. Yeah, in fact, I've got confused. I think it's that. Yeah, that one's mine because he missed that little bone just there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So if you want to know about Army Painter and is the system good, yeah, because if a first time painter can produce something that nice, with just base colours and a watch colour, as good as what I can produce, you know, with 20 years experience and the same materials. Yeah, it's got to be good, you know what I mean? So that is my fanboy. That's my fanboy. That's why I like it, because the kids can just get together. I mean, the kids painted these. Do you know what I mean? Just simple base coats and simple using the dips. So guys, that is the Army Painter range. Let's set this up for the long shot. So guys, there you have it. That is the product overview come sort of review for Army Painter. The Army Painter products and the Army Painter system. And overall, yeah, I'm genuinely sold, yeah. I really like them, yeah. I, I have no problems recommending this range of brushes, paints, quick shades, primers, basin, they have their place. Yeah, yeah. As I said, with the shades, I prefer brushing it on rather than the actual dip. That's a personal preference, yeah. But you do get good results with, with the dip, yeah. And you just get better control with the brush. With the paint, just remember they're heavy pigments and they do, they can separate, yeah. So squeeze a bit out, drop an agitator in, give it a good shake, and they are really good paints. In fact, I really like that green.
Sorry. <laughs> yeah. The system overall, the painting system, works. Produces great miniatures that, you know, if you, I've never done this with miniatures before. Yeah, and so that's a big plus. So, wholeheartedly from the Terrain Tutor, I highly recommend the Army Painter System. Yeah, and they are my go-to paints for my hobby. Yeah, and my terrain as well. Okay, and they go through an airbrush really well as well. Yeah, need a lot of thinning down, but work well. So, that's it. If you've got any comments on this, any comments on Army Paints or anything you'd like to add to this video, if you use them, especially if you're a better painter than me. Yeah, if you've got something you want to throw in there, in the comments, guys. Any questions in the comments, obviously like it if you've liked this review. Uh, share it if you think anyone is, is considering the Army Painter range or they've had problems with thinking the Army Painter paints were too thin in the past. And then finally, guys, obviously, this isn't my normally sort of videos. We don't do many product reviews on this channel. But if you, if you have liked it and it's helped you with your hobby and you're thinking about picking these up and... You've appreciated the video, yeah? There's always, you know, the old patron, yeah, and PayPal to keep the channel going. Remember, just to pledge a dollar a month or send a couple of quid via PayPal, it all helps to keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me producing content for you, which there is plenty more content coming. Yeah, in the meantime, I will say a massive thank you to the guys at Army Painter and also... Yeah, our unsung hero, yeah, that I don't know his name yet, but he... <laughs> messages down always the way yeah but thank you mate i really appreciate it yeah and finally to all you guys thanks for watching guys in the meantime i've got burma build to crack on with so i'm going to swap some paints for a bit of jungle yeah i'll catch you later guys all the best yeah Ta -da.